you guys. I wanted to spend some time today talking to you guys about something that's important to me, something that I'm learning and still figuring out. So my question that I have for you guys is, what does it mean to love yourself? We've all heard the wisdom to love others as you love yourself or to treat others the way you would want to be treated. But how can you do that if you don't know how you want to be treated or you don't know how it feels to love yourself? What if you've never even considered what it's like to receive that sort of a love? It's hard to know where to start. I didn't really know where to start either. I just like the idea of it, you know? You can't serve from an empty vessel. And it kind of became my own world that I wanted to live in where I started sharing more and more about ways to love yourself. But I was finding that I didn't even know what I liked or, you know, what I enjoyed as an individual. Uh, it comes from a place in me where my tendency is to be more passive or more compliant, to numb out when feelings come up or desire comes up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to feel the weight of that. I don't want to feel the weight of expectation or pressure. And so I ignore feelings like that. With that in mind, I kind of have been going through a discovery period <laughs> where I'm trying to figure out how do I love myself? Where do I start with that? How do I do that work emotionally to know what's me and what's someone else and what's someone else's idea of me. It's hard for me to sort through that on my own, but that's one of those things that you kind of have to do. You can kind of pull the group of people, of trusted individuals in a way, but it's one of those things you kind of have to work out for yourself. And so these are some things that I've been doing recently that have helped me grow and build a new habit, a habit of self-love. If my story is similar to yours and you're the kind of person who just would rather not handle that side of your life, you end up falling into a pattern where any sort of social interaction is draining, any sort of exchange where you're giving of yourself and giving of yourself, it's coming from this place that's not filled. And so it's hard to feel like you can give back if you're not even nurturing what you already have and allowing the space in the room to grow in who you already are and the person that is already you know in you <laughs> in a way if you haven't taken the time to just peel back those layers of who are you really at the very core so maybe today you'll try something new <laughs> and discover a little bit more about what you value how to take care of your own heart and your own mind, body, soul, all that. <laughs> and I'm doing this with you too. So I'm walking through this at this period of my life. I'm walking through discovering more about that sort of a thing. So <laughs> here we go. One of the first things that I decided to do was to start by listing off things that I like. <laughs> now you might be thinking, you know, what? That's not hard. It's so easy to think about things that you just enjoy and you like. But for me, it was really tricky because the things I started listing off the first time I did this actually ended up being things that my husband likes or my sister or my mom. There were a few things that were definitely me in there, but golly, I had to sit and be like, wait, actually, do I really like dark chocolate? Not really. <laughs> you know, it's like the simplest things, even the smallest thing. And so I decided to make a list of things that make me smile and laugh, things that bring joy to my life and smells that I like, food that I like, feelings that I like, like being warm and cozy, candlelight, natural light, lamplight. <laughs> I realized I like eating out, but I also like to cook. I mean, who else, who else, right? But I liked fresh and earthy smells, like the smell right outside right after it rains, or the smell of like a tobacco and vanilla candle, or the smell of bergamot, or 
vetiver. I love the smells. Oh, oh man. Or I like the taste of coffee without sugar. That was one of the things that I wasn't really sure about <laughs> because I was like, I never re really liked coffee growing up and I didn't really like coffee until I was like 17 and my husband kind of made me get into that when we were dating <laughs> and, um, and now I drink coffee black, which I was like, do I even like black coffee? Do I really like black coffee or am I just doing this because I think it's better for me or whatever? And I just realized I like coffee and that's okay for me. I like coffee without sugar. I like just a latte that's just the... Oh man, thinking about that. <laughs> I like a latte with just the milk, you know, no sweetener, no anything in it, no syrups. I just like the latte. And that's just a thing that I get. And I was like, oh, that's so basic. I get, you know, this and that. And it's like, wait a second, wait a second. When you start judging yourself for the things that you like, that's a little bit messed up. <laughs> you're allowed to like the things that you like and you're allowed to want the things that you want. And that's part of loving yourself. I ended up making a list of things that I don't like. <laughs> things like, like I said, dark chocolate, or I hate cleaning. Like I don't like person, like the act of cleaning. I'm like, uh, I hate it. I like the result of cleaning, but I'm not too into the act of cleaning. Uh, I would much rather, in an ideal, perfect world, someone else would clean up after me. Like I could just cook all day long, I could make smoothies, I could make whatever I wanted, and then somebody else would just come in and clean up after me. <laughs> so I didn't have to do it. But I realized that the things that I like are very material, very sensual, like with your senses. So like things that I like to look at, like certain lighting situations, nature, scenes, landscapes, sunsets, smells and tastes and feelings. Things that I don't like ended up being like very mental, emotional when I was making my list. Things like being interrupted or being talked over, feeling rushed or pressured to get moving and go, go, go. Being mocked. Like when I'm being serious and it turns into a joke all of a sudden and I'm, I get confused by that, I'm like I was being open and vulnerable and all of a sudden that turned into a joke. I don't get that. And it turns into something that's funny. Like, mm, that just makes me just oof inside. And there's some other things that are like just creepy and gross to me like ants or sprickets or weird bugs. I'm not into that. But most of those things for me that I, when I made my list of things I don't like, ended up being more emotional feelings. Like the things that I would just let slide. Situations where I was being interrupted or being talked over, I would just let myself vanish and naturally just do that because it was harder for me to show up for myself and it was harder for me to speak up or to say, wait a second, let me finish. I didn't feel like it was something I needed to do. It was really telling for me. I felt like it was going to be just like a normal sort of a list where it was like, oh, I like fruits and I like smoothies and I don't like that smell of when you just got a scoop of peanut butter and you put the peanut butter covered spoon in the dishes and then you let it sit there and then you have to wash it later. I hate that smell. But I thought it was going to be things like very simple like that. But as I sat with myself, and this is the key as well, to just sit with yourself. Oh man, that is hard work. Just to be with yourself. Especially if you don't already have a practice of recognizing who you are and loving that person and honoring that person. Anyway, it was really eye-opening for me to sit there and do that. And so I feel like that is a good first step to loving yourself is to give yourself permission to like something and to not like something and to not have to explain yourself and to justify why you like something or why you're interested in something. There's something freeing about that to just sit with yourself and admit it like, hey, I don't like being interrupted. And then how can I show up for myself later when I'm in a situation where I'm being interrupted or talked over or when I'm being vulnerable and it turns into a joke. It's like, if you don't even realize these things about yourself, how are you, how is it even gonna be something that you can learn how to manage and learn how to walk through and grow in? That's the first one, that was really long. Hmm. <laughs> so I think the major key here, major key here is to actually just kind of get out of your head. So after you've spent some time sitting with yourself and jotting some things down, don't stay in that space forever. <laughs> don't stay in that space and regret the times that you didn't show up for yourself. Don't stay in that space and like worry about the future and like, oh my goodness, when this happens again, I'm gonna be like this. 
at this point, it's like, okay, so you've kind of sat with yourself, you've gotten to know yourself a little bit, you're like, hey, I like that girl, she's cool, you know, hey, I like that guy, he's cool, whatever. <laughs> I like the person that I am, and it's a daily thing. It's not like a one and done, okay, finally I love myself because I wrote a list. It's like, this is the first step. So after that, and you made yourself aware of these things and you surround yourself with the things that you love and you speak up about the things that you don't care for. Next is to stay out of your head and to get into the moment, like the present, like the now, right here. Like the key word here is embodiment, of course. <laughs> it's like my favorite word. Whenever I hear the word embodiment, I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna listen to what you have to say <laughs> because it's so foreign to me to just allow myself to be in a space or to be in a, you know, to be me and to exist and to have the space to be myself and to like myself in that space, you know? One of the best things for me to do personally, and maybe this will be something that you could try, I like to, okay, this is gonna sound so funny. <laughs> I like to put on my skincare in the morning or in the evening whenever I do it. I like to put that on without a mirror, without looking at yourself and analyzing every little thing and noticing the redness or the greenness or the way your eyebrows are shaped or the way whatever, your pores, who, you name it. There's always something that when you're looking at yourself for a long time, you realize like, oh, that's a little crooked on me or oh, that's, this, one, this way and that way. Instead of doing all of that, just like be in your own skin without mirrors. And so I'll apply my skincare without looking and I'll just kind of, it turns into this very like relaxing kind of experience where I'm just like massaging my face and smelling the products. So they smell so good and like just putting everything on and just like just living in that five minutes that it takes to put on all your moisturizers and whatever. Maybe it takes you like two minutes because you just wash your face and you go or whatever. Everyone has a different situation that they prefer. Um, another thing for me, and this was a wild for me. One of my favorite things in the way I'm the most present with myself is when I'm cooking and I have some music on and I'm singing and dancing and cooking. It's like a, a scene out of a movie. <laughs> but when I'm doing that, like I am there in that moment. I'm not thinking about what happened during the day. I'm not thinking about all the things that need to get done tomorrow. I'm just there. And that's one of the best moments for me. And it turns out that this is something that I had done before I became self-conscious as a human. <laughs> we have this video, my parents were telling me about this the last time I was home. We have a video of me and I'm in the kitchen. I have my Walkman on probably listening to like honestly a book on cassette like I had my favorite book Runaway Bunny <laughs> I listen to that on cassette all the time but I was just I had my headphones on had my sound going and I was just scrambling eggs jamming out to whatever was going on and this is something that still settles me to this day I didn't realize that this had been happening my whole life or that was a safe place for me even as a kid. So maybe that's something that you can try and figure out. You can go back in time in your mind and figure out what was the thing that I loved to do before I became self-conscious. Whoa, I'm gonna move on from that one because that can, that can get really deep. So first step is listing off all the things that you like, being okay with the things that you like, living in that space for a moment. The second thing to love yourself is to just be in the present moment, to be embodied, to enjoy the time that you're doing something without thinking about the past and without thinking about the future. Just what are you doing right now and focus on that. And the last thing I wanted to share with you guys was to do something with a friend. This one is hard for me too because I'm the kind of person who's like, oh, I don't have any friends, I'm friendless. It's like that self-deprecating thing that for some reason a lot of us do. But when I thought about it, I realized, you know, I do have people that I like to be around. I have people who refresh me and when I'm with them, I'm, I feel free and I feel like I'm just myself with them. So go do something with that friend. For me, that's like going on a walk with my husband. There's something about the physical movement of it where we're walking and enjoying the sights and sounds around us in our weird little town of Columbia. You never know what you're gonna walk by <laughs> when you're here. 
and that's always really freeing. Sometimes we talk about whatever, sometimes it's just silent and we're just together and we'll go sit and watch the water in the river or something like that, but do something with someone else that you trust. Another thing that you can do with a friend is maybe share a meal. So this could be going out to get a meal, this could be preparing a meal and inviting someone in. That's something that I really want to do more of, is just have people over and have people in my space. There's something really beautiful about creating something with your own hands, taking the time to prepare it, to plate it beautifully, to light a candle, to set the table and then bring someone to it. I think we experience God's presence in that way, as well as we have the chance to really be with that other person that you're with, or maybe it's a group, and to really just like look into their eyes and see their heart, learn about what's going on in their world. It's a good way to love yourself, is to enter into somebody else's world as well. It allows perspective, mostly, you know, and to end community and just like that heart connection. A lot of people just rush through life and feel like they don't have time for something like that, but I think those are the really meaningful moments or when you can just sit with someone, look at them and enter into their own world and your worlds kind of combine and you create this whole dynamic and it's an experiential thing and da 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 da. But anyway, so those are my three ways to love yourself. I will be sharing more along these thoughts along these lines in the future and so you know, be sure to stick around if any of these connected with you or resonated with you if any part of the story that i shared about myself resonated with you i would love for you to start a conversation in the comments <laughs> um and be sure to like this video if you found any of these things interesting and i'm walking through this whole self-love journey situation with you guys too so as i'm learning and as i'm growing of course i'm going to be sharing more i hope you guys have a great day remember that you're so loved and you're capable of way more than you might think bye